And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. What coffee, dear? Hmm? Coffee, darling. You want some more? Uh, oh, no. Yeah. No, I mean no. Toast? Hmm? Toast, darling. You want some. Huh? Hey, Alice, if you just put that newspaper down for a moment, you'd hear what I was saying, and your breakfast wouldn't get cold. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. This thing in the paper. Yes, obviously, this thing in the paper. You're not just reading that paper, you're staring at it. Yes? You look so strange. What's the matter? This story. And this picture. What story? What picture? Jan, I never knew what Al Tinney looked like. Al Tinney the racketeer? Yeah. Well, I don't know what he looks like either. Honey, you haven't answered my question. Is something wrong? I never even saw a picture of him. I can't to think of it, neither did I. I wouldn't know if he bumped into me. Yes, what's that got well, to do? Well, the point is, I didn't when he did. What are you talking well, about? I didn't know Tinny when he bumped into me last June in Capital City. In the lobby of the Guarantee Building. Bumped into it apparently right after he committed a murder. And what is all this? Well, the whole story's right here in the paper. Tinny goes on trial in a few days in Capital City for murder. He's accused of shooting a man in the man's office in the Guarantee Building up there last June the 5th. Around 11 a.m. So? Well, so everybody's sure he's guilty, but he's got the usual racketeer-type alibi. 20 miles away at the time of the shooting. Well, if they can't break that alibi, he's going to get away scot-free. Understand? You mean because nobody can place him at the scene of the crime? Yeah, exactly. But, Jan, I can. Oh, Ed, no. Yes, I was there on business that day, you remember. And in the lobby of the Guaranteed Building, at just about 11, a man bumped into me, almost knocked me down. Never apologized, just glared at me, shoved me aside, and he hurried out. And? And? Now I know the man was Al Tinney. Here's the picture in the paper. So you see, Jan, I know his alibi's a lie. But... Maybe it's not the same man. Oh, yes, it is. Well, that was four months ago, 500 miles from here. Maybe you're... Maybe you're not really sure. No, no, Jan. It was Tinny, all right. I'm positive. So, you see? Ed, well, what are you going to do? Do? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to the police here in Franklin. I'm going to tell them. Oh, no. No, Ed, don't. I, I, I don't want you involved in this. Well, this Tinny is notorious. Who knows what might happen to you? But, Jan... No, Ed, please. Ed, I'm scared of this. Now, don't tell the police. Please don't. I'm scared. All right, Mr. Adams. Now, these... Um, this one, yes. Yeah. Well, that one, no, no. And that one, no. Well, that last picture. Yes, again. And this group? Number one, no. Number two, no. Three. And four. And five. Oh, yes. Well, how am I doing, Captain A? I've got to give you A for memory, A for observation. Well, once you've seen that man's face. Yeah, I know, but these other men in the pictures I've been showing you look an awful lot like Tinny. Well, that settles it. You sure do remember him. So, what's next? I notify Capital City's D.A. that he's got a voluntary witness to place Tinny where he belongs, which I assure you will start a celebration. Well, anything else for me to do now? Just go home. As soon as Capital City tells me when they need you there and what arrangements they'll want to make for your transportation, I'll get in touch with you. Trial starts in, uh, let's see, uh, five days. Meanwhile, go home and relax. <laughs> All the words, of all the words in all the dictionaries. Just look at tonight's paper. I know, honey, I've seen it. And what's going to happen? It's, it's right on the front page, all about you. All about how you're going to testify and how important you'll be to the state's case. Don't you see what this means? Well, Janet was bound to get into the paper. Where everybody can see it. Including people who may want to stop you from telling your story. Well, Jan, they can't stop me. Can? I'm no expert on crime, but a, a man like Tinny must have... Friends or 
henchmen or associates or whatever they're called. Oh, associates? Darling, that sounds very funny. Well, none of this is funny to me. <laughs> and I ask you not to do this. Don't you understand, darling? I am afraid for you. This story is public property now. Any moment we may... Oh, Ed. Oh, now, darling, it's just the phone. Don't answer it. Yeah, now, don't, dear. Everything is all right. Hello? Yeah. Oh, hi, Bob. Yes, yeah, we thought. Well, is it true? Come on now. Cut it out. You make me feel like a stuffed shirt. Sure, right here next to me. Uh, no, she isn't crazy about it. Uh, I mean... Yeah, yeah, sure. That's right. We'll talk about it another time. Yeah, sure. Bye. It was just Bob. You see, dear, you don't have to be so jumpy. And... Come on, dear. Now, you answer it this time. It won't bite. No, oh, Jan, no. please. Hello? What? Who is that? Who is it? Ed. Who is it, Jan? Some... Jan, what's the matter? Who was that? Some man. What did he say? Tell Adam to change his story quick or you'll find out. Yes? You'll find out dead men can't testify. What else? What else? Wasn't that enough? And what are we going to do? What did he say this the time? The same thing. Why did you have to get into this oh, thing? Oh, Jan, get hold of yourself. There was nothing else I you could do. You don't have to be a hero. Other people were in that lobby. They didn't volunteer. Maybe they didn't see it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they knew better than getting involved. Darling, I don't want you to earn a posthumous medal for public spirit. Jan, dear, don't. Now, don't cry. <laughs> didn't Captain Hale send a police car to watch the house? Look, out the window. It's right there. See? I know. Everything's going to be all right, I tell you. Maybe it's just a crank calling. You can't know that. Anyway, nothing's really happened. You will and... be given the chance to retract. By now it's obvious you won't. No! no I'll get that. <coughs> Hello? Yes? Who is this? Yes. And I can't stand it anymore. If that phone rings again, if I hear that voice again, you call Captain Hale. You tell him we've got to get out of here. Some days where we can't hear that phone. All right, all right. Whatever you say no. now, dear. No, wait. No, wait. I just realized. Maybe that's the whole purpose of these terrible calls. To get you off this house. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Adams. Captain Hale. Capital City just called. They're sending a Lieutenant Neal of their police to take you up there. Tonight. Yeah, that's right. He'll fly in this evening, then he'll take you back on the 10 p.m. flight from here and... What? Oh, no, no. You won't be alone for a minute. The prowl car will take you and Mrs. Adams down to headquarters right now. As soon as Lieutenant Neal arrives at my office, we'll have a bite and get you to the airport. Right. Lieutenant Neal, one of the best. I've heard a lot about him myself. You haven't got a thing to worry about, believe me. We're sending you up there with the right man. Real pleasure to meet you, Lieutenant Neal. I'm Lieutenant Kane of Captain Hale's squad. Oh, Kane. Kind of surprised to hear myself being paged as I got off the plane. Didn't expect to be met here at the airport. Oh, we don't know you by sight down here, Neil. Hale wanted me to be sure not to miss you. See, there are a couple of changes in the operation. Oh? Like what? Well, for one thing, you don't go to headquarters. We moved Adams to a private house on the outskirts of town. That's where I take you to meet Hale. Why the switch? 
A little added security. Hale's afraid that, uh... Well, look, I'll explain it on the way. I got a car outside. Let's go. Well, you can see what Hale has in mind. He simply figures that somebody may make an all-out try to get Adams. And he figured that if somebody knows all the details of how we're moving at him tonight, why, something may go wrong. What, for instance? Who knows? He's just being double cautious, that's all, just in case. So what makes him think anyone could know? It's been secret. How would they find out? There's one way. What way? What if they had a wiretap on Adam's phone? Any reason to think they had? Could be, Neil. Personally, I'm inclined to think it's a very good possibility. Yeah, a very good possibility. I see. How much further to where we're going? We're practically there. As a matter of fact, uh, before we get there, there's something I've got to give you. What? This. Oh! Oh! Sweet dreams, Copper. Sweet dreams. Of course, you want to see my credentials, Captain Hale. Thank you. Let's see now. Your shield, your identification card, a letter from the district attorney in Capital City. Uh, fine. Credentials all check out okay. Happy to meet you, Lieutenant Neal. Tickle to meet you, Captain Hale. This is Ed Adams. And Mr. Adams, this is the officer from Capital City who will be responsible for your safety. How do you do? Hello, Adams. I've been looking forward to meeting you. And this is Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams, Lieutenant Neal. Mrs. Adams. Lieutenant. If Mrs. Adams looks nervous, it's because she is. Those threatening phone calls, you know. Of course, it's only natural. Lieutenant, you will be very, very careful, won't you? Mrs. Adams, I'm here to take care of your husband. I'm going to do it. Yes, ma'am, I'm going to take real good care of him. You see, Jan, I told you everything's under control. Come on now, and he's mine. Well, I guess everything's all set, huh? So how about getting started? I mean, you and me, Mr. Adams, shall we go? It's early, Neil. An hour till your plane leaves. Takes only ten minutes to get to the airport from here. Uh, sure, but I... And thought... we haven't had dinner. Yeah, but don't you think... And I think everybody's hungry. I am, I know. How about you two? I don't think I'll eat again until the trial is over. Well, personally, I'm starved. Yeah, but so that's that. We eat. Relax, Neil. We've got plenty of time. The only question is, where do we eat? Shall we send out or go out? Well, the airport dining room's fine with me. With me, too. No objections? Good. Dinner's on me. Uh, no, no, it'll be on me. See, in view of everything, the least I can do is buy Mr. Adams his dinner. And I don't want you to hold back, Mr. Adams. Order anything you want for the meal. I want you to eat like there's no tomorrow. Wake up, you. Come on, I'll snap out of it. Mm -hmm. What's going on? You're under arrest, that's what's going on. Now get out from behind that steering wheel. You're not driving anymore tonight. Driving? Me? Yes, you. You did a fine job. Drove this convertible up on the sidewalk, then parked it neatly against the fire hydrant. Now, come on. Out of the car. Stop shaking me. Up the daisy and out you come. Oh, easy. Oh, my head. Cut it off. You're not hurt. People don't die from a hangover. They just think they will. Now, try standing by yourself, huh? Wait. There's something wrong. You don't understand, don't I? One sniff for you, mister, and anybody would understand. Now, start walking. Oh, hold it. Officer, I'm just beginning to remember. Listen, I'm not drunk. Mister, when I find a guy sleeping over the wheel of a car, he parked on the sidewalk up against the fire pump with a whiskey bottle three-quarters empty on the seat next to him and the guy smelling like a distillery, I make a deduction. Drunk. I said, let's go. Wait. I'm a police officer. Neil, Lieutenant Neil of Capital City. This isn't what it looks like. I can identify myself. Just let me show you my papers. My shield. Right in this pocket. My wallet. My credentials. They're gone. Oh, come on now. Sober up. I found letters on you addressed to William Taylor, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And a wallet with initials WT to match. And no driver's license. Explain that to the sergeant. Wait, you gotta listen to me. The phony, he slugged me. Wait a minute. You gotta listen. He's gonna use my credentials to get a hold of... What time is it?
Driving without a license, driving while under the influence of liquor, damaging private property, damaging city property, and resisting arrest. Hmm. Busy evening. Sergeant, we're wasting time. I've been trying to explain what happened. I can identify myself. Oh, done. yes. Also, impersonating an officer or trying to. Is that right, Tom? Right. Will you stop this nonsense and let me explain? You call these charges nonsense, Taylor? For the last time, my name isn't Taylor. And I can identify myself if you'll let me use the phone. No, you're identified now. Then you use the phone. I'll tell you where to call. Forget it. Don't you see? Time's running out. Look at that clock. A man's got my credentials. All he has to do now is present them to Captain Hale of your police department right here in Franklin. And when Franklin, he does... Franklin? Franklin? Now, look, you, you're in Sunnyvale, ten miles outside of Franklin. What kind of an act is this? So I was moved here. It's all part of what I'm trying to tell you. I'm here to protect a witness. His life is at stake. I tell you, my credentials will be used. Look, there's no time to go through the whole thing again. It's getting late. Right. Bedtime for you. Tom, put him in a cell where he can sleep it off. You'll be arraigned tomorrow, Taylor. You can't do this. I have a right to use one phone call now before arraignment. That's right, you have. And I've been trying to give you a break. You make that call now on the condition you're in, you waste it. Now look at you. You're drunk. You're wild-eyed. You don't know what you're talking about. Now you sleep it off first. Make your call in the morning. Tom, lock him up. I have a right to one phone call now. It's the law. So it's like that, huh? Okay, mister, I'll let you make a phone call. One call. And then, mister, I'll want some straight answers. Now, who do you want to call? Captain Hale of Franklin Police Headquarters. Oh, I see. I get it now. You're a big shot, huh? You know, big brass in the big town, and you want to put some pressure on, is that it? For Pete's sake, sir! Well, I've got some news for you. This may be a supper, but we don't take orders from anybody. Come along, nice fellow. Just a few more steps to the desk. Uh, the officer? <laughs> Upper class, drunk and disorderly sergeant. I found him sitting on top of the war memorial singing hinky dinky parley vu. Uh, he uh, threw peanuts at me when I told him to come down. Won't give his name. Of course. Incognito. From distant metropolis. <laughs> anyway, what's in the name? And, and for that matter, who is Sylvia? What is she? Listen, you, I'm in no mode for another drunk. Sergeant, my phone call. Alas, for the decline of manners. Canada visiting. Gentlemen celebrate with purest song the wedding of an old college chum in the wretched peasant village said chum inhabits, and having so celebrated, cannot he be booked in the local pokey, sir, without interruptions from all cab why, what are you doing here, Lieutenant Neal? What? What'd you say? What was that, lad? I have Welcome. Speak again. You know this man? Uh, no. I I charge you, this is that same Lieutenant Neal, peer of detectives who arrested me in Capital City at my brother's wedding. Let him deny it to be there. Preston Cantwell the third. And your humble client. Well, Sergeant. Yeah, I get the picture. Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. How can I Skip it, there's it? no time. Call Hale. Yes, sir. Franklin Police Headquarters, quick, emergency. Look, Lieutenant, I can't tell you how bad Forget I Forget it. Uh, it was touching. Your loyalty, Lieutenant. Hold this distance to sponsor my suburban castle. Uh, castle. I think I shall go to sleep. Hello, Franklin Headquarters. Sunnyvale Police, Sergeant Burns speaking. Captain Hale, please. What? He's not there, Lieutenant. Where is he? Where is he? Says he's at the airport dining room with some people. You got a phone in there? It's 9.35. How far is it from here to the airport? The airport's closer to Sunnyvale and Franklin. Seven, eight minutes in the squad car. You want to try to page Hale at the airport? No, it'll be dangerous. Hale know you by sight. Yeah. Good, get off the phone. Sure. Uh, thanks, no message. Now what? Get a car on the way. I'll tell you what we'll do. <laughs> Even the coffee's good here. Well, it's ten minutes to take off, Mr. Adams. Aboard in the plane, so... About saying goodbye to the missus. Yes, I guess it's about time. Already? Oh, Ed, I really wish... Captain Hale, the check's paid, so you and Mrs. Adams have some more coffee, huh? Mr. Adams and I can get started. Uh, No, I'd rather see him onto the plane. Yes, me too. That's not necessary. I'll take over now. Paging Lieutenant Neal of Capital City. Will Lieutenant Neal come to the superintendent's office in Portland? For you, Neal... Yeah. 
Well, go ahead. The superintendent's office just outside this dining room. Now, look, it's getting late. Mustn't miss a plane. Let's disregard this. Will Lieutenant Neal please come to the superintendent's office immediately? Urgent. Better go, Neal. You've got time. Oh, well, I think... All right. Uh, come with me, Mr. Adams. Adams can stay here till you come back. Extra minute with his wife. But... But what? <laughs> Can't trust me to watch him? Uh, okay. Captain Hale. Sergeant Burns. Captain, I've got something to tell you. Here's what happened. Somebody paging you? You, Buster. Get your hands up. boy. Now face the wall. That's it. All right, now I'll lean. My credentials, my gun. You're Hale? Yes. Burns explained the whole thing. Good. Then I'll leave this prize package to you. Book him for assaulting me and suspicion of attempted murder just for openers. And I hope he tries resisting arrest. With pleasure, Lieutenant. Five minutes to take off. So if you don't mind, Captain, I think maybe it's time for you to introduce me to Mr. Adams. Suspense. You've been listening to Death and the Escort by Harold Huber. Included in the cast were Don McLaughlin, Elspeth Eric, Bob Dryden, Joe Julian, Larry Haynes, Leon Janney, Harold Huber, Maurice Tarplin, and Ian Martin. Listen next week to The Beetle and Mr. Bottle, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense on CBS Radio.